Life on mortality tables may not mean a lot to most Ugandans. But if one can explain them using their relevancy, these are tables used to determine the pricing of financial products. And without them, the financial sector is actually shooting in the dark. Alarming though is the fact that Uganda has none and is basing the pricing of its financial products on the South African and the Kenyan life tables. Today, we break down what these are and the efforts being done to rewrite the challenge we have. Patrick, it's good to have you on the show, Money and Markets. Thank you, thank you. Now, um, we've been discussing and talking about life tables or mortality tables. What are we talking about? One, it is statistics about the likely longevity of individuals. But then you classify it in terms of jurisdiction and then age cohorts and then other, other classifications as well. So you realize that it's very important for us to know. We will come up, for instance, with numbers like life expectancy, and that's a composite number. But within that, there are subcategories, which some of which are very, very important for pricing of financial products. Talking about financial products, how do they help, in particular terms, the pricing of these products? Um, I think the best is to give a few examples. Yeah. I can first of all say we have products like a life insurance contract. When you look at it, what is a life insurance contract? Really, it's like me, and I say that I want to save some money on a monthly basis. And then on the occurrence of a life event, which could be death, a certain lump sum is given back to my nominated beneficiaries, perhaps my family, all at a certain event. But what happens is the contract seller, who is the insurance company now, decides to that you're going to maybe pay, for argument's sake, 200,000 or 500,000 per month for so many months. And then at the time of that event, we'll give you 50 million. Now the question comes is, is it a good deal or a bad deal? To answer that, the insurance company will try to estimate what is my life expectancy now? How many years am I, or months am I likely to stay alive? until they have to pay. If it's five months on average, five years on average, well, you may say they are taking a good deal. Uh, maybe I'm the one taking a good deal. But if it's, if I could live for another 25 years, you may say they're taking longevity risk on me. Because it means if I live very long, um, someone will have to pay. The amount doesn't change. It's simply that you pay more money uh, during the term. Uh, sorry, that's life insurance. Let's look at it. Annuity number. The annuity is I pay a lump sum today. I'm, suppose you're 55 or 60, you retire, you get your money from NSSF. Let us assume it's 70 million and you say, I could spend all this money in a few months, trying to do some businesses, but you know business interests. Or I could say, no, let me just buy an annuity. So you go to an insurer and you give them all this lump sum and you tell them, what? take this money. However, they tell you, on a monthly basis, we shall give you a million for as long as you're alive. And that's a good deal because you don't worry. The insurance company takes the money, invests it, of course, pays off some costs, and then pays you. Now, that's very good for everyone, but who benefits if you live a very short time? I think we could say the insurance company will benefit if you live only two years. However, if I stay for the next 40 years, and I'm, I mean, people can live up to 100. But you pay them, and now they have to meet your costs. And there's a contract to that. There's a contract. Yes. Uh, figures are, uh, are tied. So they are taking longevity risk on you in that case. So that's an example. Where does Uganda and East Africa in general fall, you know, in the development of life tables? As we speak, many players in this space have been using tables from another jurisdiction, another location. They borrow tables from South Africa. Recently, they borrowed tables maybe from Kenya. Kenya developed its tables about 10 years ago. They've gone through at least one cycle of revision and there's talk of a second cycle of revision. Rwanda developed their tables last year. Uh, as far as I know, no other country in this region after South Africa, except South Africa, Kenya, and Rwanda have developed tables. So a player in this market would borrow tables from either those or the UK or Switzerland based on their insurance arrangements. And they would have now to justify so we are saying that a person who is 45 years in Uganda in 2018 has the health characteristics of a Briton in 1949 in Europe. But 
we know that there are so many factors which will affect life expectancy. You're drinking too much, you, you maybe the food you eat, the lifestyle you live. Nowadays we have things around HIV, they affect and plus the countering effects of, of drugs. So these things have to be factored in into, into longevity. Yes. Uh, I think what has been happening in this region, there has been um, some players just kind of left that space because they thought it's too dangerous. And because they didn't have exact figures, they either borrow and increase the margin of error. What does it mean if I increase the margin of error? It means that we price it in such that the insurer, the service provider is more comfortable. Now there are two sides. If I'm the consumer and I think the price is, doesn't make sense, I will just uh, sit back. Uh, but on the other hand, if the price is unfavorably uh, too good for the customer, the customer will take it up. But it may affect the capital insurer. And that has issues around the whole uh, industry because you want us to accept. Thank you very much, Patrick. It's been nice talking to you. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure, man. It's been nice.